renowned for her all-American charm. The blonde beauty Sandra Dee started her career as a child model before transitioning to film. She captivated 1950s audiences with her wholesome image, earning her a reputation as the ultimate good girl. However, the actress's life was far from the squeaky clean persona she portrayed on screen. Behind the scene, Sandra Dee endured a tumultuous childhood filled with hardship. But what many didn't know was that the actress was hiding an even more devastating secret. The memoir penned by her son pulled back the curtain on the darker side of the actress's life, revealing a world far removed from the idyllic image she presented to the public. From her troubled upbringing to her biggest secrets, the true story of Sandra Dee is one that is much darker than most people realize. Growing up, Sandra Dee's childhood was far from ordinary. Born in the early 1940s, she had a troubled start to life when her father left her and her mother when she was still a toddler. This left the two women to fend for themselves, which might have brought them closer together, but it also had a darker side. Mary, Sandra's mother, developed an unhealthy obsession with her daughter, one that would shape Sandra's life forever. When Sandra's mother realized that her daughter was turning into a strikingly beautiful little girl, her response was disturbing. She began dressing up Sandra in intensely adorable outfits, like a skirt with an Eisenhower jacket and a little hat, treating her like a living doll. Unfortunately, this was just the beginning. Mary didn't just treat her daughter like a doll. She was also eerily codependent on her. Sandra's mother insisted on spoon feeding her until she was six years old. And when Sandra was old enough to attend school, Mary would frequently keep her home anyway to keep her company. She would lie and say it was raining outside, drawing the curtains closed to keep the outside world at bay. When Sandra was five years old, her mother began a romance with Eugene Duvin, a dashing New York City real estate mogul. Instead of tempering her obsession with Sandra, it only seemed to heighten it. Sandra recalled that when the newlyweds went on their honeymoon, she slept between them. Duvin always said he was marrying both Mary and Sandra, which was enough to make anyone dysfunctional. But Sandra had so much more where that came from. Despite the challenges she faced in her childhood, Sandra Dee went on to become a successful actress known for her roles in films like Gidget and Imitation of Life. However, the scars of her childhood would stay with her for the rest of her life. Even before Sandra Dee's acting career took off, she had already made a name for herself in the world of modeling. At the tender age of eight, her mother, eager to capitalize on her daughter's good looks, started booking her for modeling gigs. Initially, it was just occasional jobs for brands like Girl Scouts, but by the time Sandra was 11, she was a seasoned professional earning nearly 8000 a year. However, this early success came at a cost. Sandra's mother, Mary, became even more controlling, pushing her daughter to maintain her prepubescent appearance. When Sandra started to develop curves, Mary forced her to bind her chest, which had severe psychological and physical consequences. As Sandra entered her teen years, the pressure of modeling and her mother's dismal guidance took a toll on her. She developed a full-blown eating disorder subsisting on almost nothing but lettuce for an entire year. Instead of getting her the help she needed, Mary only pushed her harder. Despite these challenges, Sandra persevered and went on to become a successful actress. However, the scars of her early experiences in the modeling industry remained with her, serving as a reminder of the dark side of the industry that often prioritizes appearance over well-being. By the mid-1950s, Sandra Dee's mother had set her sights on Hollywood for her daughter. At the tender age of 11, Sandra rode the subway alone to auditions and attended a special performing arts school where she rubbed shoulders with other aspiring stars like Tuesday Weld. Determined to make her as sophisticated as possible, Sandra's mother dressed her in elegant clothes and styled her hair in a mature way. But Sandra's big break came in the worst way imaginable. In 1956, her stepfather Eugene Duvin passed away from a heart attack, sending the family into a tailspin. Despite her heartbreak, Sandra managed to pull herself together and attend a screen test just days after Dubin's funeral. The screen test was with powerful producer Ross Hunter and Sandra's emotional state ended up working in her favor. She couldn't stop crying, but instead of being alarmed, Hunter saw dollar signs. He said, I saw that moms all over the world would say, gee, if my daughter could be like little Sandra D, that would be wonderful. Sure enough, Sandra's heartbreaking performance won her the job. She went on to become a successful child actress, known for her innocent and wholesome image. But as we'll see later, 
This image came at a cost. Sandra was often typecast in sweet and naive roles, and she struggled to break out of this mold as she grew older. Despite these challenges, she remained a beloved figure in Hollywood for decades to come. In 1957, a young girl named Sandra Dee made her film debut in Until They Sail. She played a character tested by the trials and tribulations of love, starring alongside heavy hitters like Paul Newman and Joan Fontaine. However, her casting was the result of an enormous lie the studio thought she was 14, but she was only 12. In fact, her body was still so underdeveloped that the studio had her wear a rubber suit under her clothes to give her the illusion of more curves. This wasn't even the most awkward part. Due to spending so much time in an adult world, Sandra Dee didn't really know how to be a child anymore. It was reported that she was so excited about her new body that she rushed over to her 32-year-old co-star Paul Newman and screeched, Mr. Newman, Mr. Newman, want to see my body? It was going to get a whole lot worse as well. Despite these awkward beginnings, until they sail launched Sandra Dee's career, and she soon became a bona fide American sweetheart. Her fresh-faced innocence and wholesome image made her a favorite among audiences, and she went on to star in a string of successful films throughout the late 1950s and early 1960s. However, the actress's early experiences on set had a lasting impact on her. She struggled to navigate the adult world and often felt out of place. Despite her success, Sandra Dee's career was marked by a series of personal struggles, including a highly publicized divorce from her first husband, Bobby Darren. Despite these challenges, Sandra Dee's legacy as a classic Hollywood starlet remains. Her performances in films like Gidget and A Summer Place continue to captivate audiences, and her influence can be seen in everything from fashion to film. Although her career was marked by both triumph and tragedy, Sandra Dee will always be remembered as a symbol of American innocence and a true Hollywood icon. In 1959, Sandra Dee skyrocketed to fame with her breakout role in the film A Summer Place. The movie was a major success, and the actress quickly became a household name. Her wholesome image and girl-next-door charm earned her a legion of fans, with gossip columnist Lula Parsons even comparing her innocent beauty to Shirley Temple. But behind the scenes, Dee's perfect life was already crumbling. The young actress was still struggling with her eating habits and would often binge on walnuts every Saturday, only to drink Epsom salts afterward to purge herself. It was a vulnerable position for the actress to be in, and she was about to make a fateful decision. Despite her success in A Summer Place, Dee's career was far from smooth sailing. She followed up the film with hits and imitation of life, and as a beaky beauty, but the reality beyond her dressing room door was unspeakably ugly. The pressure to maintain her wholesome image, and the rigors of Hollywood took a toll on the young actress, leading to a downward spiral in her personal life. Dee's struggles with her eating disorder continued, and her relationships with men were fraught with turmoil. She married two high-profile husbands, including Bobby Duran, but both marriages ended in divorce. The actress's personal struggles were well documented in the press, and her once promising career began to falter. Despite the challenges she faced, Dee continued to work in film and television throughout the 1960s and 1970s. She appeared in a number of successful films, including Tammy and The Doctor and Rosie, but her personal struggles continued to overshadow her professional accomplishments. In the end, Sandra Dee's legacy is a complex one. She was a talented actress who achieved great success in Hollywood, but her personal struggles were well documented in the press. Despite the challenges she faced, Dee remained a beloved figure in the industry, and her contributions to classic films will always be remembered. Sandra Dee's career was on the rise, and she soon secured a role in the film come September alongside Rock Hudson and Gina Lola Brigida. It was during this time that she caught the eye of her young co-star, Bobby Darin, who was known for his hits like Dream Lover and Mac the Knife. Darin was immediately smitten and began pursuing Dee relentlessly. However, Dee was not as easily swayed. She found Darin's tactics to be conniving and turned down his proposal when he casually asked her to marry him during one of their first meetings. But Darren refused to take no for an answer, and resorted to taunting Dee like a schoolboy, chanting Sandra Dee has a fleet. In an attempt to win over Dee, Darren turned his attention to her mother, Mary. His efforts paid off, and Mary eventually convinced Dee to go on a carriage ride with him. 
It was during this ride that Darren managed to convince Dee that his antics were because he was terrified of how deeply he felt for her. His explanation worked, and the pair began canoodling all over the come September set, leading to a rash decision. Before the film finished shooting, Dee shocked her co-stars with the announcement that she and Darren had eloped. Despite the disapproval of her older co-star Rock Hudson, and even her mother, Dee claimed that she had never felt safer in her life than she did with Darren. Unfortunately, this feeling would not last. Darren expected Dee to follow him around like a puppy, insisting that she attend every one of his Vegas shows dressed to the nines and with perfect makeup on. Despite Dee's dutiful attendance, Darren often ignored her in favor of his buddies. Dee grew increasingly bored and began resorting to cruel tricks to get Darren's attention. She would cause scene, cry, and even tell Darren that his tube was crooked just before he went on stage. When asked why she was always in the middle of the drama, Dee sniped, I'm bored. Their relationship grew more and more strained, and Darren became paranoid that Dee was having an affair with her Tammy and the Doctor co-star, Peter Fonda. Although Dee swore until her dying day that they were merely friends, Darren wouldn't listen. In a cowardly move, Darren had a minion break the news of their divorce to Dee instead of telling her himself. Despite their attempts to change their dynamic, they separated again in 1966 for good. The instigating event in their final split was when Darren saw Dee talking to Warren Beatty at a party. Unable to face up to Dee himself, Darren had his psychiatrist tell her that they were through. After Sandra Dee's divorce from Darren, she faced significant challenges in both her personal and professional life. As she grew older, the actress, who was once known for her fresh-faced beauty, found that audiences were no longer interested in her films. This, coupled with the end of her relationship, led to a series of disheartening upheavals for Dee. In a 1967 interview with Roger Ebert, Dee made a bitter public revelation, openly smoking and sneering at the image of little Sandra Dee that the public had come to know. Unfortunately, this was just the beginning of her trials. Despite her efforts to keep working, Dee found that her roles were slim and often played to type. She took on the role of a college girl in the supernatural film The Dunwich Horror, but even this did little to move the needle on her career or her personal life. To make matters worse, Dee's ex-husband Bobby Darren was not making things any easier. Although Dee never remarried and never got over Darren, he quickly moved on, marrying his secretary Andrea Jur in 1973. This was a difficult blow for Dee, but it was only the beginning of her emotional struggles. Darren's health also began to decline around this time, and he received two artificial vows in 1971. Despite his failing health, Darren continued to turn to Dee for comfort during his upsets. The two rekindled their relationship, but it ended in tragedy when Darren developed sepsis and passed away in 1973 during heart surgery. The aftermath of Darren's passing was devastating for Dee. She was beside herself with grief and struggled to cope with the loss of her ex-husband and the father of her son. Dee's career continued to flounder, and she turned to guest roles in an attempt to keep working. However, she eventually became a near recluse, focusing only on raising her son Dodd and trying to avoid fights with her mother Mary. Despite her best efforts, Dee never fully recovered from the loss of Darren. As she famously said, I feel like a has-been that never was. By the 1980s, Dee had all but retired from acting, and she turned her focus to her family. However, she wouldn't have that for long, as her mother Mary was still around, and still imposing her will on everything. In the end, Sandra Dee's life was marked by heartbreak and loss. Despite her best efforts to keep working and move on from her past, she was never able to fully escape the shadow of her ex-husband or the challenges that came with growing older in Hollywood. In the late 1980s, Sandra Dee's life took a dramatic turn for the worse. Her mother, Mary, had been suffering from lung cancer, and as the end drew near, she delivered a final insult to her daughter. Reportedly, on her deathbed, Mary told her grandson Dodd, don't be a victim as I was. Don't waste your life cleaning up after Sandra. These vicious words had a profound impact on the actress, who was already struggling to hold herself together. The loss of her mother pushed Dee over the edge. She had always struggled with eating and drinking, but in the wake of Mary's death, she gave herself over entirely to her demons. Dee confessed that during this time, she lived only on soup, crackers, and scotch, and her weight plummeted to nearly nothing. Her son, Dodd, watched in horror as his mother's breakdown took hold. When she began vomiting blood, he knew he had to act. 
Dodd got his mother to seek both mental and physical rehabilitation, which almost certainly saved her life. Slowly but surely, Dee began to improve, even expressing an interest in acting again. However, her demons were never far away. Despite her efforts to curb her drinking, she continued to struggle. Years of mistreatment had taken their toll on her body, and she received a disturbing diagnosis kidney failure. Dee now needed dialysis to survive, and the harsh reality of her situation pushed her to stop drinking once and for all. Although she had finally quit drinking, Dee's health continued to decline. In 2005, she was only in her early 60s, but she was suffering from horrible complications of kidney disease that no amount of dialysis could fix. On February 20th of that year, she died in the hospital, surprising many fans who still thought of her as the fresh-faced girl they had seen on screen. Sadly, Dee's final years were marked by declining health and a struggle with addiction that she never fully overcame. Despite her many talents and the joy she brought to audiences around the world, her personal demons were too strong to overcome. In the end, Sandra Dee's life was a cautionary tale about the dangers of addiction and the importance of seeking help when we need it most. In 1994, the world was shocked to discover the dark secret that had haunted actress Sandra Dee's life for decades. Her son, Dodd, revealed in his memoir, Dream Lover, the unspeakable sin that had been running through his mother's life since she was just five years old. Sadly, Sandra's stepfather had been intimately mistreating her for years, a revelation that shed light on many of the actress's struggles throughout her life. Despite this harrowing experience, Sandra's mother, Mary, refused to believe that her husband was anything but a saint to her daughter. The abuse that Sandra suffered as a child had a profound impact on her life. It explained her premature development, her inability to take care of her body, and her difficulties in relationships. However, Sandra was not just a victim of her stepfather's actions. She was also a talented actress who had a successful career in Hollywood. Despite the challenges she faced, Sandra's son, Dodd, grew up to be both a devoted son and a loving father. He did his best to protect his mother and was there for her in her later years. Sandra's story is a tragic one, but it is also a testament to the human spirit's resilience. Despite the unspeakable pain she endured, she continued to work in the film industry and left behind a legacy that continues to inspire people today. Her story serves as a reminder of the importance of believing survivors and supporting them in their healing journey. In the glamorous world of Hollywood, Sandra Dee became a symbol of youthful innocence and grace. Born Alexandra Zuck on April 23, 1942, in Bayonne, New Jersey, she quickly rose to fame during the late 1950s and early 1960s. Initially discovered by Hollywood agent Henry Wilson, Sandra's career took off with her debut in Until They Sail in 1957. However, it was her role in Gidget the following year that truly catapulted her to stardom. Her fresh face charm and wholesome image captured the hearts of audiences, making her one of the most popular actresses of her time. Sandra Dee's career continued to flourish throughout the early 1960s, with notable roles in A Summer Place, Imitation of Life, and Tammy Tell Me True. She even won a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress in a Musical or Comedy for her performance in The Reluctant Debutante in 1958. Despite her success, Sandra's personal life was fraught with challenges. She married Bobby Duran, a renowned singer and actor, in 1960, and the two had a son together. However, their marriage was plagued by infidelity and addiction, ultimately ending in divorce in 1967. Sandra's career began to decline in the late 1960s, and she eventually retired from acting in the 1970s. However, her impact on Hollywood and popular culture remains significant. Her legacy as a symbol of youth and innocence continues to resonate with audiences today. Born Alexandra Zuck on April 23, 1942, in Bayonne, New Jersey, Sandra Dee was destined for a life in the limelight. The daughter of a nurse and a telephone engineer, her early years were spent in a close-knit family that encouraged her natural creativity. At the age of four, Sandra's family moved to California, where she would later be discovered by a talent agent. Sandra's mother, Mary, played a significant role in her early exposure to the craft. Recognizing her daughter's talent, Mary enrolled Sandra in dance and acting classes. These early experiences would shape Sandra's future, leading her to become one of the most popular actresses of the 1950s and 1960s. In her teenage years, Sandra's career began to take off. 
She landed her first film role in 1957 in the movie Until They Sail and quickly became a household name. Throughout her career, Sandra worked with some of the most influential directors and actors of her time, including Alfred Hitchcock and Doris Day. One of Sandra's most significant influences was her mentor, Ross Hunter. A renowned film producer, Hunter saw great potential in Sandra and took her under his wing. Under his guidance, Sandra's career flourished and she became known for her roles in romantic comedies and dramas. Sandra's natural talent and hard work earned her numerous accolades, including a Golden Globe Award for Best New Star of the Year in 1958. Despite her success, Sandra remained humble and dedicated to her craft, always striving to improve and grow as an actress. In conclusion, Sandra Dee's early years were marked by a supportive family, a love for the arts, and the guidance of influential mentors. These experiences shaped her path and led her to become one of the most beloved actresses of her time. Growing up in the 1950s, Sandra Dee was just like any other young girl with dreams of stardom. She was born Alexandra Zuck on April 23, 1942, in Bayonne, New Jersey, and moved to California with her family at a young age. It was there that she first discovered her passion for acting. At the age of eight, Sandra's mother enrolled her in the San Diego School of Ballroom Dance. It was here that she first caught the eye of a talent scout, who encouraged her to pursue a career in acting. Sandra's mother, a former actress herself, was thrilled at the prospect and began taking her daughter to auditions. Sandra's first big break came in 1957 when she was just 15 years old. She was cast as Ginger in the film Until They Sail, opposite Paul Newman. The film was a critical and commercial success, and Sandra's performance caught the attention of Hollywood. But it was her role as Amanda in the 1959 film A Summer Place that truly solidified Sandra's place as a rising star. The film was a major hit, and Sandra's performance was praised by both critics and audiences alike. From there, Sandra's career took off. She went on to star in a string of successful films throughout the 1960s, including Gidget, Imitation of Life, and Tammy and the Doctor. Despite her success, Sandra remained humble and dedicated to her craft. She once said, I'm just a girl from New Jersey who got lucky. But for those who knew her, it was clear that Sandra's talent and passion for acting were the real keys to her success. Throughout her career, Sandra Dee remained a beloved figure in Hollywood. Her sparkling personality and undeniable talent continue to inspire aspiring actors to this day. Born Alexandra Zuck in 1942, Sandra Dee's early years were marked by financial struggles. Her father's untimely death left the family in debt, and a young Sandra had to work to help make ends meet. Despite these hardships, she remained determined to pursue her dream of becoming an actress. At the age of 12, Sandra's mother, a former actress, moved the family to California to help her daughter break into the industry. However, Sandra faced skepticism from industry insiders who doubted her talent and potential. Undeterred, she continued to audition for roles and eventually landed a contract with MGM. Sandra's first few film roles were small and unremarkable, but she refused to give up. She worked tirelessly to improve her craft, taking acting classes and studying with coaches. Her hard work paid off when she was cast in the lead role of Gidget, a 1959 surfing film that became a surprise hit. Sandra's fresh-faced, all-American image made her a popular choice for teen roles, but she longed to be taken seriously as an actress. She began to seek out more mature and challenging parts, often going against the advice of her agents and managers. One of Sandra's most memorable roles was in the 1960 drama, The Summer Place, in which she played a troubled teenager dealing with issues of love, sex, and identity. The film was a critical and commercial success, and Sandra's performance earned her widespread acclaim. Despite her success, Sandra continued to face challenges in the industry. She struggled with weight gain and was often criticized for her appearance. She also dealt with personal issues, including a tumultuous marriage to singer Bobby Duran and a battle with alcoholism. Through it all, Sandra remained resilient and determined to succeed. She continued to act in films and television shows throughout the 1960s and 1970s, earning a reputation as a hardworking and dedicated professional. Today, Sandra Dee is remembered as a trailblazing actress who overcame numerous obstacles to achieve success in Hollywood. Her legacy continues to inspire aspiring performers around the world.
In 1959, at the tender age of 17, Sandra Dee's career reached a turning point with the release of A Summer Place. The film became a surprise hit, earning $4 million in its first year and propelling Dee to stardom. Her portrayal of a young girl torn between two lovers resonated with audiences and established her as a serious actress. Critics took notice of Dee's talent, with Variety praising her exceptionally appealing performance. Her co-star, Troy Donahue, spoke highly of her work ethic, stating, Sandra was a true professional. She knew her lines and was always prepared. The following year, Dee received a Golden Globe nomination for New Star of the Year for her role in Imitation of Life. Although she didn't win, the nomination solidified her status as a rising star in Hollywood. In 1961, Dee won the Golden Globe for World Film Favorite Female, further cementing her place in the industry. That same year, she starred in Gidget Goes Hawaiian, which became a cultural phenomenon and solidified her image as the all-American girl. However, Dee's career took a turn in the late 1960s as she struggled with personal issues and the changing landscape of Hollywood. Despite this, her impact on the industry remained significant. As film historian G9 Basinger put it, Sandra Dee was a symbol of a certain kind of American girlhood. She was the girl next door, but with a sparkle in her eye. Dee's work transcended the screen and became a part of popular culture, inspiring generations of young actresses and leaving a lasting impact on the film industry. Sandra Dee, born Alexandra Zuck on April 23, 1942, in Bayonne, New Jersey, was an actress known for her girl next door charm and wholesome image. However, her journey to stardom and the roles she played were more complex than her innocent on screen persona might suggest. Dee's mother, a former band singer, encouraged her daughter's interest in performing from a young age. After winning a few local talent contests, Dee's mother moved the family to California in pursuit of her daughter's acting career. At the age of 12, Dee signed a contract with MGM and began taking acting and singing lessons. Dee's breakout role came in 1959 with the film Gidget, in which she played a teenage girl who falls in love with surfing. The film was a hit, and Dee's fresh-faced, all-American image made her an instant star. She went on to appear in a string of successful films throughout the 1960s, including A Summer Place, Imitation of Life, and Tammy, and The Doctor. Despite her success, Dee's personal life was far from perfect. She struggled with an eating disorder and was involved in a tumultuous marriage to singer Bobby Darren. These experiences informed her work, and she brought a depth and vulnerability to her roles that belied her wholesome image. Dee's approach to acting was methodical and disciplined. She was known for her rigorous preparation, often immersing herself in research to fully understand her characters. She also had a unique ability to convey emotion through her facial expressions and body language, which added depth and nuance to her performances. These personal experiences and worldview were also reflected in her work. She often played characters who were struggling to find their place in the world. Whether it was a teenage girl navigating the complexities of first love or a young woman trying to make it in a male-dominated industry. Through her characters, Dee explored themes of identity, independence, and self-discovery. In the end, Sandra Dee's legacy is one of complexity and depth. While she may have been known for her girl next door charm, her work as an actress was far from simple. Through her disciplined approach, emotional vulnerability, and nuanced performances, Dee left an indelible mark on the world of film. Sweet and innocent, Sandra Dee captivated audiences during the late 1950s and 1960s. Known for her roles in Gidget and Imitation of Life, Dee became a symbol of the all-American girl next door. Her influence extended beyond the silver screen, impacting both fashion trends and the acting industry. Hollywood costume designer Walter Plunkett Praised Dee's style, stating, Sandra had a unique ability to make any outfit look adorable. Indeed, Dee's fresh-faced look and casual attire inspired a generation of young women. Her iconic image, featuring ponytails, sweater sets, and capri pants, remains recognizable even today. As an actress, Dee's impact was equally significant. According to film historian G9 Basinger, Sandra Dee represented a new type of female lead. She was relatable, approachable, and genuine. This shift in leading lady archetypes paved the way for future actresses, such as Doris Day and Judy Garland. Dee's influence also extended to storytelling. 
Her roles often showcase complex, coming-of-age narratives which resonated with young audiences. As a result, these stories became more prevalent in Hollywood, allowing for a more nuanced portrayal of youth on screen. Although Dee's career was relatively short-lived, her impact on the industry remains enduring. Actresses like Emma Stone and Zooey Deschanel have cited Dee as an inspiration, citing her authenticity and charm. In conclusion, Sandra Dee's contributions to the film industry were numerous and far-reaching. From fashion trends to storytelling techniques, Dee left an indelible mark on Hollywood. Her legacy continues to inspire and influence actors and filmmakers today. Transitioning to Sandra Dee's personal life, she was known for her warmth and generosity. Despite her wholesome image on screen, Dee was a devoted animal lover and often took in stray pets. She also had a passion for cooking and would frequently share her favorite recipes with friends and family. In terms of values, Dee placed a high importance on honesty and integrity. She was known to be fiercely loyal to those she cared about and was always willing to lend a helping hand. These personal values often shone through in her work, as she consistently chose roles that reflected her own morals and beliefs. As for philanthropic efforts, Dee was involved in several charitable organizations throughout her life. She was particularly passionate about children's causes and worked closely with organizations such as the Muscular Dystrophy Association and the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Dee also used her platform as a celebrity to raise awareness for various social issues, including environmental conservation and animal rights. One notable example of Dee's philanthropic efforts was her involvement in the Hollywood Women's Press Club's Children's Hospital Fund. She served as the organization's president for several years and worked tirelessly to raise funds for the hospital. Through her efforts, Dee helped to provide crucial medical care and resources for countless children in need. In addition to her charitable work, Dee was also known for her advocacy for mental health awareness. She spoke openly about her own struggles with anxiety and depression and used her platform to encourage others to seek help and support when needed. Overall, Sandra Dee's personal values and interests played a significant role in informing her work both on and off screen. Her generosity, loyalty, and commitment to social issues left a lasting impact on those around her and continue to inspire others to this day. Reflecting on Sandra Dee's legacy, her impact on the acting industry is undeniable. Known for her roles in films like Gidget and the Imitation of Life, Dee's innocent and relatable persona captured the hearts of many. Her ability to portray a wide range of emotions made her a versatile actress, leaving a lasting impression on the industry. For those aspiring to follow in her footsteps, Dee would likely advise them to stay true to themselves and their craft. In an ever-changing industry, it's important to remain authentic and not get lost in the hustle and bustle. She might also encourage them to take risks and push themselves out of their comfort zones, as this is where true growth and learning occur. As for the future of the acting industry, it's clear that technology will continue to play a significant role. With the rise of streaming services and virtual reality, there are endless opportunities for actors to showcase their talents in new and innovative ways. However, no matter how advanced technology becomes, the human element of storytelling will always be essential. Dee's legacy serves as a reminder that even in the face of adversity, it's possible to leave a lasting impact on the industry by staying true to oneself and continuously pushing the boundaries of their craft. Aspiring actors can create a legacy of their own. Born Sandra D. Johnston in 1942, the actress quickly adopted the stage name Sandra D. Her journey in the entertainment industry began at a young age when she won a local beauty contest at age 11. This sparked her passion for performing and leading her to pursue a career in acting. Dee's career took off in the 1950s when she signed a contract with Hollywood studio MGM. She quickly became known for her girl next door image and her roles in films such as Gidget and A Summer Place. Despite her wholesome image, Dee showed her range as an actress with more mature roles in films like Imitation of Life and The Reluctant Debutante. Throughout her career, Sandra Dee demonstrated innovation in her approach to acting. She brought a fresh, youthful energy to her roles and was not afraid to take on complex characters. Her work resonated with audiences and helped to shape the landscape of Hollywood in the mid 20th century. Sadly, Dee's personal life was marked by struggle and hardship. 
she faced challenges with her health and relationships, but she continued to persevere in her career. Despite the obstacles she faced, Dee's impact on the entertainment industry remained significant. Sandra Dee's story is a testament to the power of creativity and perseverance. Her passion for performing and her innovative approach to acting have left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Her legacy serves as a reminder that with hard work and determination, anyone can achieve their dreams. As we take a moment to appreciate the work of Sandra Dee, let's hear your thoughts on her career and legacy. What made her performances so special? Which of her films do you hold dear? Share your memories and favorite roles in the comments below. Let's celebrate her contributions to the entertainment world together. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content that highlights the creative spirits who have left their mark on the movies and television we love. Your support helps us continue to create engaging and informative content for all to enjoy. So, let's get the conversation started. What did you think of Sandra Dee's work, and how has it impacted you? We can't wait to hear from you.